Coast Wolves podcast. Um, today is January 12th, 2016. Um, welcome to everyone who's coming back and thanks for checking us out if you're new. Um, I'm Bernadette, otherwise known as Eco Geek in all the places, and this is. I'm Glenda. I'm Glenda McDonald on Instagram, Glenda on Ravelry, and I think that's all the places you can probably find me. <laughs> Um, and I don't know if Bernadette, I can't remember if you said, uh, nope. the store is at Wet Coast Wools on all the things. So just, um, yeah, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. TripAdvisor! Go rate us on TripAdvisor! <laughs> <laughs> We're officially a thing to do in Vancouver. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> um, so, um, I was trying to think if we have anything fancy to announce off the bat, because it was like, it's a new year. But oh, like, happy new year, everybody. Yeah, I was like, we saw you right before the <laughs> change of the year, so it feels like we're already into it. it. But a happy new year! At the same time, though, that feels like that episode, I feel like that was a month ago. Like, it just has gone so, I don't know what's happened with time. It's not running properly. <laughs> no. Well, I, like, I think we're still, things are still a bit crazy here, and I think, like, things are all over the place, and I don't know. Time doesn't seem to go as nicely as it used to. I don't know if it's just like me getting older. Yes, or I think like it's, what's going it's, on. it's getting older. <laughs> Unfortunately, know. it happens. Uh, well, should we just jump right into foes? Sure. Do you want to go first, or uh, should I go first? You can go ahead because you have more foes than I do. Wow, you I have do. a lot more foes than I, I do. I finished a lot of things. Um, so I guess I'll start with what I'm wearing because it. Well, it's not very exciting, but it's on me. So. Um, on the last podcast, I showed you guys the super bulky grandpa cardigan I was making, um, and I finished it, which is great because it was supposed to be minus four today. So of course, it's gonna be plus six on Saturday. So yeah, just in time. Yep. Um, so it is very fuzzy because it was not of a single ply, but it was yarn that I had in my stash. Um, here, I'll button it for effect. So this is the super bulky grandpa cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. Um, I knit it out of. The back is not exciting. <laughs> Ta-da! Um, so it's, I knitted out of Bernat roving. As you guys have seen, I had a lot of it in my stash. Um, but I held it double. I knit it on US 17s and still didn't get her gauge, but that's fine. Um, because it is a single pie, it's going to pill a lot, uh, but that's fine. It's just a cozy, warm, snuggly sweater. Um, I knit the sleeves first and then knit the body as long as I wanted it. Um, I did knit them a little bit shorter, and then with the weight of the sweater, when I washed it, it grew tremendously. Um, by tremendously, I mean about an inch, but it works really well for the length of the of the sweater. Did your swatch grow um, at all when you I washed it? <laughs> didn't wash my swatch. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, it's okay, though, because I kind of factored it in. Like, it's a cozy, like, it's just my sleeves are longer, and now the bottom's longer to wear with leggings, so it's it's fine. Um, I washed this four days ago, and these cuffs are still slightly damp. <laughs> um, but I did want to, I'm going to take it off so I can show you guys the buttons, because the buttons are super cute. Um, I got them in a swap um, that I did with the Knit One Geek Two podcast um, last year, and I, um, I can't remember her name, or username on Ravelry, but we did a swap, and she... Um, I mentioned, this was before I cross-stitched, so I mentioned that I loved cross-stitching. I'm going to go around. Mm -hmm. Hello. <laughs> so. Doo -doo -doo. She hand-crossed me some, cross-stitched me some buttons. And they are beautiful. And it sounds probably really weird. But I wanted to, to show them off because I'm so happy I finally have an opportunity to use them. Um, cause buttons that large are kind of hard to put on a sweater sometimes. So yeah, that's my first, my first foe when I'm going to put it back on cause it's cold. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure once it warms up like a little bit, I can just wear this as a coat. But today with a high of zero, I didn't want to risk it. Mm -hmm. Um, do we want to go back and forth or do you want to? Um, you can do another one and then okay. I'll do some. Okay. Um, I'll do, oh, noises. For once, it's not my fault. No, my... Okay. 
My sock blockers have tangled themselves in my hot water bottle cozy. So, <laughs> nailing things today. Okay, so my next foe are my sparkly OMG socks, which you guys haven't seen in forever. Over this way. This is going to be hard today. So, ta da! Um, these are just the OMG heel pattern, and the yarn's Fiber Nymph Dye Works in her Double Tree colorway. Um, I started these in September, I think, for a class we were teaching, and then I got hit with a wave of Christmas presents and just put them down. So I had one whole sock finished and then like up to here, so the other day I just, I think it's, it's this guy. So I whipped through the leg and put a heel in, and now I have a pair of socks. Um, sadly though, because they were a whip, I can't count them for my box of socks, but um, the box that holds my socks I can count them for. <laughs> but for the knit along, they don't count. But I'm happy to have them off my needles, and now I only have the April and my skirt lurking. I plan on getting those done. Soonly. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one more pair of socks that were my Christmas Eve cast on. Um the super scientific way of putting socks on sock blockers. Um, did you do the Christmas Eve cast on? I did not do a Christmas Eve cast on because I had intended to do a Christmas Eve cast on and then the gift knitting ran long and I did not finish. <gasps> oh, <coughs> no, never mind. You saw it last week. I was going to say, I finally, I, the, um, dog sweater that I knit last week reached its intended recipient and I have the Ooh. cutest little photo maybe I'll Instagram it later um, Ooh, yes, please. of Clover the little dog in her cute little sweater which fits her perfectly you should send it to me so I can pop it in for them yeah to see. I will it's super cute Clover's an adorable little dog oh I'm sure and now I have to make another sweater because such a cute dog needs another sweater clearly it's true and you I have other fun patterns that I want to try out so you should make her themed ones <laughs> themed sweater <laughs> well considering they live in Ottawa where there's like snow on the ground until like April um then, you know, she could definitely use the sweater all the way through. Yep. Maybe I'll do a green one for St. Patrick's Day. Ooh, good plan. They are big St. Patrick's Day celebrators. So. <laughs> yeah, I think that's I a great idea. Uncle Bob would be very impressed. <laughs> that's Michelin. So my, it's for Mike's cousin. Well, she's my cousin-in-law, Michelin. She's the owner of Clover, and Uncle Bob is Michelin's dad. Oh, And they're okay. the ones who own the cottage that I always talk about going to. Okay, that makes sense. It's just the name Uncle Bob sounds like a character from, like, no. Christmas vacation or something. Uncle Bob is real. <laughs> And then we find out he's all in your in no. your imagination. He's real. Um, I think he's in Mexico right now. Interesting. <laughs> I'd probably go to Mexico if I lived in um, Ontario in the winter as well. Um, Anywho, so these were my Christmas Eve cast on. They're my C-3PO socks. I love them very much. Um, so they're all done. It, the yarn is uh, mustache yarns in her droid self-striping. Did you have any leftover? Um, I saved a little bit, so I can put a hexagon on my blanket, because I have a hexagon of R2. I'm just so wondering if it would have been possible for you to make them exact, or was there not the right um, amount of yarn? Because I know it's only a 50 gram skein, right? Yeah, I didn't, I never really bother making my socks match. Um, clearly, like, these ones don't match either. <laughs> um, I don't really care that much. Weirdly enough, my OCD does not reach my feet. Um, but I'm very happy about these. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next year when the new Star Wars movie comes out because I'm out of Star Wars yarn. So at You'll some point this year... Somebody on, commented on our on the last podcast about where you can find other... Yeah, Haverlin other, Yarns yeah. has... has um, she has a companion set of BB-8 and um, R2. Well, there you go. But you can do that one. I don't need another pair of R2 socks, though. So we'll put them... I don't know. <laughs> no, maybe we'll just... I'll just have to... Maybe you can like get a special order of just a full skein of BB-8 BB yarn. Either that or I don't know. Maybe I'll like stripe yarn myself who knows mm -hmm. that's but so those are done these also were finished um to because they were cast on in 2016 they don't count for my box of socks so these are in this weird limbo where they count for nothing when but you say know. box of socks is that a different cal or is that no the box hours? of socks the box of socks cal okay um they do count for our sock well no they don't because they were whips so they count for nothing except yeah. for Old keeping the Old rules are working warm. against you. <laughs> but it's okay, though, because obviously it just meant I had to cast on more socks. Of course, um, why not? And I have one final whip, and then Glenda can talk for a while. So I finished my hot water bottle cozy, which the hot water bottle is not filled up right now, so it's a bit big. But it's it maybe um, cozy. Felt it slightly mm -hmm. around the 
if you never, I mean, it depends if you ever intend to take it off the bottle, but you can felt it, let it felt around. You know, when you fill it up with boiling water, you can accidentally spill on the, the side of it <laughs> and then make it felt to the bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little bit big. Like if I would, was to do it again with my gauge, I would go down a needle size. Um, but that's okay. It's a hot water bottle cozy. I and no, I didn't swatch because it's a hot water bottle cozy. Like, <laughs> was gonna swatch for hot you water bottle. Swatch, you would have fit it perfectly. <laughs> I don't care. So the whole point was to cover it so it's not just this ugly hot water bottle anymore. And now it's got an adorable turtleneck cable knit sweater. So this is my be cozy in our Kilkara tweed yarn um, in the hero colorway. And I love it, and it's mushy. And this was supposed to get the orange color out of my system. I don't think it helps, because now I'm going to stare at it and this smoosh it. This is a great color. All the time. And I'm going to want more of it. How much is on the shelf? It's this way on the shelf. Enough oh, I can make a, a sweater. But I don't, after the <laughs> recent ordering we've done, I don't think I need <laughs> any more yarn. Not that I needed any more yarn to so begin with. So many pretty things coming soon. Okay. Um, go. Okay, my turn. So, um, I realized... Um, I oh no wait never mind okay we're gonna put this down so look I finished this sweater it's Yay! a very big oversized sweater um I cast it on you haven't seen it before because I cast it on on New Year's well okay I cast it on a New Year's Eve and then like New Year's Eve day so like in the morning of and then I got to just below the underarms and then I turned it on and it was like like this is loose on me it was like bigger than this it was massive because I actually did swatch and I actually did wash my swatch but then for whatever reason because I was on the sofa lying half propped up because I was it was a sick day for me when I was knitting it and I ended up getting a really loose gauge so then it was much bigger than I had anticipated so then I had to rip it all out and start again and go down a size so this version got started on New Year's well I had like three rows on New Year's Eve and then on New Year's Day I did the rest of it and then I had to knit the sleeves four times to get them to where I wanted because I wanted I figured oversized body you need fairly fitted sleeves and so the shaping like it's supposed to be a loose sweater and the sleeves in the sweater were much bigger to suit the size of the sweater so I had to figure out how to narrow them down quite a bit and then get the shaping so it was like not kind of I don't know it did all weird things on the sleeve and now that I've washed it it's actually grown and now I'm wondering if I should shorten the sleeves oh it's fine because you can but I'm gonna cozy see cozy sleeves cozy sleeves yeah. for the win <laughs> you just need to steak um thumb holes in oh, it and there it's you go. the most 90 sweater of all time <laughs> But no, the, so I it's the yarn is um, it was given to me by Karen and it's uh, Debbie Bliss Blue Face Lester Aaron, um, and the colors duck egg if you're wondering. But um, Linda Gray, <laughs> yeah, that's what it was deemed. Um, it's because it's superwash BFL. I think like it it grows and you can tell like it's not got the clingability of like un -super, non super wash wool yep. and so I'm going to see how it wears because I'm not sure like it's stretched a little bit in washing which I kind of expected and by rights I should have done a tighter gauge to compensate for that stretching but I didn't really think about it till too late and then now so I'm going to see if it if it stretches while I'm wearing it a lot I may have to there's a chance it may get ripped out and re-knit but um, I'm hoping that it'll like hold its shape at least once it's dry and then maybe next time I wash it I might risk it in the dryer just to kind of well, I think, it up a little bit. I think now that it's dry, you should throw it in the dryer. Because yeah. that, that helps the like, dryer, for some reason. There's, I just this. have this like but physical when, thing against putting wool in the dryer. It's just like so wrong. But I mean, well, it's super wash. It's super it's wash. Really it kind of needs it. But well, yeah. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> I mean, ideally, you could wash it enough and take the super washing out of it, and then it would go back to being real, almost real wool. But yeah. by that but, point, it would probably felt. <laughs> yeah. But like once it's, once it's dry, the heat just kind of helps it mm. loop a bit. I'll see what That's happens when I wear it because I'm wearing, obviously wearing it today and we'll see how much it stretches out. But I kind of like it. It'll be for like the spring and the summer. Just a loose cozy. <laughs> summer. Well, no, when I'm on, I was thinking when I'm on the sailing boat because it's no, Vancouver. I know, but I'm just imagining you like in the summer just like scarfy like <laughs> sweater. Just... You have not seen me sailing on, in the summer when I'm like four layers of wool and still freezing my butt off. No, sailing makes sense. But it's just the way you said it. Like, hey, I'm anybody so who's sad. British will totally understand you always take a sweater to the beach. It's just a requirement because it gets cold. Well, you do that here too. It was yes. just like the way you phrased it. I'm just like imagining you like at the beach like in a sweater. Sweater. No, I was thinking like, you know, <laughs> throw it on over a t tank top and a pair of shorts at the end of the day and to stay warm sort of thing. Yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> Sorry. Just imagine you lying <laughs> on the beach in like a bathing suit with those, like a the big sweater, sweater over top. And I'm just, I'm no, just I have beautiful. actually, um, from having, we, for our honeymoon years ago, we sailed in the Caribbean. 
and what I want to make for the for lying in the sun is get like that you know there's the SPF fabric you can buy and mm -hmm. not like the stuff for upholstery but like the wearable fabric and I want to make like a long sleeve pullover like kind of crew neck so that when you're in the sun and you feel like you're getting cooked and you no longer want to be in the sun but you can't get out of it because there's no place to hide in the shade you pull that on and then you're not going to like get any further sunburn if it wasn't if it wasn't for a boat thing what you could do is you get one of those like um reflective umbrellas or they oh. like they have the 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 shiny fabric on the inside and yeah. it like, creates a shade bubble for yourself oh yeah yeah that would help but if you're on yeah, a boat but no you on the boat it doesn't flight. work because like we were you know as the sun's setting you can't even if you have like a cover they're called a bimini or whatever then you still end up in the sun and you can really bake in those hot suns yes anyway moving on <laughs> um i have a hoe which i'll show you look was it done last time no it wasn't done last time no. it's done it on now Instagram the same time I finished that's right house. look i've it's still got its marker on there christmas tree marker can you see it do you want to mark uh, a blocker? christmas tree um are you okay no we're okay I still okay. can't see it. I'm waiting. One of these days we're going to have enough daylight in here you can actually see the real color. Probably not. It's getting there. It was not sun up till close to 8 o'clock today. I was really not impressed. No, but the sun's now going down at, after 4. So oh. really we're small victories. <laughs> yeah, very small. Um, 4.30 I can what still else is see. On my list? Oh yeah, and then the other fun thing is I've been making. So this sweater, I feel like it took me a month to knit it because when you do this leave 17 times, well, or four, same thing, <laughs> it feels like it never, never ends. So then I got into some fun knitting. So this is Cornelius. That's going to haunt so many people's dreams, <laughs> including mine. Please. <laughs> What's wrong with Brewster's? It's his, it, no, it's just his eyeballs. Oh. It's like he stares right into your soul. He like, does. Like, they do this, that. Here, this, we'll put him there so you can oh, still see him. hilarious meme. So this is, um, the, the pattern is called Chicken, Chicken, Chicken by Emily Ivy. She does the coolest toys. Um, and I whipped him up mostly on Tuesday. No, today's Thursday. Finished him yesterday. Started him on Tuesday. He's a really quick knit. His legs look really weird, like his little chicken thigh things. I don't know. They kind of, they don't look so, I don't know. When he's sitting, he's he okay. Like he's wearing Shakespeare pants. <laughs> he is, and then his little tail. Chicken, chicken butt. Colors. I love the chicken butt. It's really well done. <laughs> um, and then I needed, so he's for an upcoming display, which you'll see on Instagram at some point. And he needs friends because he needs friends. And so. It's just like that made me so nervous. <laughs> not the gaggle of turkey. I mean, roosters. They're not turkeys. <laughs> they keep look, they look the turkey, like turkey thing is entirely my fault. Let I'm me very see if sorry. I can. Okay, there's one turkey. Tiny ah. chickens! Any, any old school nerd fighters out there? It's They've me. fallen out of my nose because I'm no longer sick. <laughs> this is like, we're going to have to explain that reference. <laughs> you mentioned, I think we talked about it in the last Not the on last the podcast. podcast. We just talked oh, about the, okay. the tiny chickens thing. Anyway, they are, they don't have names yet. This is Cornelius, that's all I know. And then these guys are just the, well, I was going to call, they're, I don't know, there's no so, name for a group of roosters. So I said flock of roosters, but gaggle of roosters sounds better. Yeah, um, we were we were googling groups of groups of birds. Um, my favorite two: <laughs> Parliament of Owls and a Pandemonium of Parrots. Perfect. That's Nailed a pretty one, good one. That and like Murder of Crows is pretty accurate as well. Mm. A Pandemonium yeah, of Parrots. Just <laughs> so where, where I live, um, it's kind of just at the end of False Creek area, and at the end of the day, like just before dusk, there's like all I swear all the crows out of False Creek and all out of like this area of downtown, they all fly out of the city and go out somewhere toward the east. And then in the morning, they all come back. And it's seriously like hundreds and hundreds of crows just flying in huge, huge flocks. I feel like they come to my neighborhood, but I don't know what they're I don't know. I, I know a bunch of them go out toward Boundary Road. There's like a ravine sort of area. Mm. I don't know where they, they all but it's like they go home for the night and then they come out and they cause trouble again. But they're it's really creepy to watch it. It's like watching the birds large groups of birds <laughs> um did you say what the pattern oh are, these guys tiny chickens yes so these, the tiny Squirrel. chickens see now you can see how tiny they are um they are um from the teeny tiny mochi mochi book by um anna and i always say herovic but that's totally not pronounced right it is i spelled it out properly last night it is herakovic Rakovic? I don't know. You've seen it. You know why we're mispronouncing yes, it. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm mispronouncing it. Um, I realized though the tiny chicken pattern is actually available on on their website, uh, the Mochi Mochi Land website for free. Um, and then she shows you, well, there was an email that went out um, just a couple weeks ago and she showed you how to, with a little bit of face embroidery, you turn your chicken into a rooster. And then there is on Ravelry, somebody put a little addendum on how to add a tail so you can have little tails. Yeah, I think in the other chicken pattern, it's just missing, like, the gobble, right? 
Yeah, it has, it has just, the just, but has the comb, but not yeah. the little like under chin thing. So I'm like, I think mine that is now glued to my Christmas tree <laughs> <laughs> has has the yeah. top thingy. It's just a little, and then the tail is kind of it's a fun addition too. You can make them bigger or smaller. It would be even yeah. sillier if you knit your tiny chicken sweaters. Because apparently chicken sweaters are That thing. would be really funny. Or like just one for Cornelius, like a sweater vest. Oh, like the little vest like a, thing? Yeah. There's a like, night cape one. Yes, it's true. <laughs> What's a night cape? Just quick. I, what, I it's got to be like a like a little like capelet thing. Like, like to go with your nightgown? Like, or maybe I just if you're so sitting confused. up in bed reading, it's like the bed jacket kind of idea. And you just throw like it on to... chicken? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so when we were looking at Ravelry, they're like chicken sweaters, and apparently there's a chicken night cake. Well, Monique was knitting a kitchen, chicken sweater. Yes. It's just a they don't know kitchen that, sweater. Though. I'm just giving them context. Yeah. yeah. It's just, when you look up chicken sweaters, there's a look chicken it up. night cake. It's pretty cape, funny. Um, and it confuses me greatly. Mind you, if there was, well, I don't know about the night cake, but the sweater, considering it's minus four right now, and Vancouver chickens are not used to that kind of temperature. Chickens should not be outside minus four. No, they, they should shouldn't. not be anything but maybe, below But maybe the sweater five. will let them go and play outside during the day. <laughs> Well, during the day, it's like up to a balmy zero degrees. Yes, exactly. What's happening? Uh, do you want to talk about your your work in progress? Okay, so my work in progress. Um, look, it's the other sock of the one I just showed you. Um, what's the yarn? Since you it's, didn't say oh, yeah. you were doing your hoe. It's um, Turtle Pearl Ba Humbug colorway, um, appropriately named for me, who's the Grinch. <laughs> um And I am really far behind on knitting these things, and that's ridiculous. Okay, but I was for my for my Christmas Eve cast on. I almost cast on Christmas socks. Like, yeah, I was so tempted. It, this silly. is supposed to be what I was casting on for that, and then I was supposed to have them all finished before Christmas, like before New Year kind of thing. But you know, whatever. But I was amazed. So I finished I did that one sock. The mini. That's the leftover of the one sock. There's like a good amount of leftover. Well, I know, like so for I'm my have socks, to find something useful for all my minis. For I know for my socks, I normally only end up using sixty grams of a full hundred gram skein, which is why yeah. I'm splitting that fifty gram skein into a pair of socks is like not a yeah it's not a, not a huge just, stretch so i was thinking i could well i don't know if it'd be quite enough for if i did really long toes and like different Why? different no but different cuff sorry let me finish my thought oh, okay um different color cuff toe and heel and just did an extra like a really long well a slightly longer toe then i could probably get a second pair of socks out of these maybe yeah you could do like um, a bright green or something or yeah like a gray just i wouldn't do a black because then it red would just... no i was thinking red maybe would be good red cuff and toe it would like to, i wouldn't be the same same shade of red but i don't think it would matter do you mean oh sorry my brain was thinking okay so my brain was thinking using this guy for the toe heel and cuff oh no no no. this would be the and body then, oh okay and then do contrast it with a how many grams do you have um this was like i think i'd have 40 mm, maybe so like you know, i'd have you to do an extended them. long toe like i don't think i'd get all the way up the foot in the one color so you just knit them toe up and then knit them as long as they are and then do a different color cuff and you yeah. could do like a longer ribbing which looks less weird than a weird long toe <laughs> i don't know i like the one sometimes when you see the longer toe be, that part's in your foot anyway right or in your shoe so you don't really see that part and take your take your until you take your shoes off which is what <laughs> you do in vancouver when you go to someone's house you take yes. your shoes off and then you go into their house and then you show off your socks um do you have any other whoops? Oh, is that it? Um, no, I have one more. Are we more. going back and forth? Should I talk about something? Uh, yeah, you can talk about something. Okay. Um, so, um, because our two knit-alongs have started, I had to cast on things for our knit-alongs. So, um, to refresh everyone's memory, although I'm sure you guys know, because you've probably also madly cast on as well, I'm sure. It's not just me. <laughs> um, so, as part of our um, sweater, knit-along sweater challenge thing of the year, I am... I want to call it only a challenge for me. No one else is required to do the crazy that's happening. The 12 sweaters is the maximum, not the requirement. No. Yeah, you can knit one any like one to 12. It's just like knit sweaters. It's pretty much the underlying thing. Um, so this sweater technically counted for the sweater challenge, even though it's crazy super bulky. But it did. It's technically an adult size garment. Um, but I also I cast off one black sweater and cast on a new one. Um, this guy will be more exciting, but right now, um, this is my, this is my Lopa Pesa sweater, which is, um, it's called that because it is an Icelandic sweater in Lopi yarn. I'd hold it closer, but it's really just like a black blob, guys. Um, so I'm using the Gamble Dogs pattern by Helen Magnusson. Suna, please do not make fun of any of the pronunciations in this section. Um, this, um... Suna is the Icelandic person who used to work for us. 
um, and is now rudely moved back to Iceland <laughs> to be with her family for some reason. Um, but before she left, um, she gifted us a bunch of her lopi yarn. So I thought it, um, I stole the one that had the most, the closest thing to a sweater quantity. So I have eight skeins of this black color. Um, and then I'm going to do some really fun color work. Um, I didn't bring the colors with me because I have a lot of yarn, but I'll show you guys the picture on the pattern. So it is, it's a traditional kind of color work. Um, kind of color work sweater. This one is floating around Ravelry, and I know that Carla of Relentless Knitting made this for her in a secret sauce. So it's this sweater here, lighting. And I'm doing something similar to this crazy colored version. They look like they're just having so much fun frolicking in the snow. Um, yeah, so it has a bit of waist shaping in it, and um, which is apparently not traditional in Icelandic sweater, but the color work is a traditional kind of style. Um, and yeah, I'm also planning on steaking this guy, um, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to be on a steaking kick, as we'll point out in later things in the episode. But so I have. Do, do, do. I have my steaking panel. You guys can't, can't see it. <laughs> um, so I have, I knit my ribbing and then I cast on three extra stitches, which you can't see, but I promise there's three extra stitches there. And you purl them the whole time. And then I'm going to go in and do a crocheted steak and crochet up um, two of the stitches. And then I'm going to cut the third one. Because um, that's what I learned to do when I took the steaking class at Knit City uh, two years ago. So, it only took me two years to actually get around to steaking a sweater, but I'm very excited about it, um, and I have many other steak sweaters planned. But yeah, so hopefully next week, well actually hopefully by the time we do the next podcast, this will be done. Because um, it's, even though it's a black blob, it's kind of exciting. Okay, I don't know if I have anything else to say, I'm just kind of rambling. <laughs> What's your... Um, so my other whip... Um, that I'm I pulled out yesterday because I need to force myself to work on it. Um, it's this blanket. I'm gonna put it in front of your face. Do you want help? Um, I like so, this one random yellow guy. Yeah, so it's gonna be. It's totally. I'm doing it totally random. Cause look, there's another weird red one on the end. Um, this is the weekender blanket. Um, oh, and I've forgotten who it's by. It's I um. Write it down. It's by Sandra Paul, which is Cherry Heart. Right. That's it. Um, so, <laughs> I have several of these on the go. Um, this one is um, from some acrylic, and it's um, it's I think most of, mostly Peyton's Astra, and I think the yellow is some sn snuggly Sirdar Snuggly DK. Like, it feels um, like snuggly. And it's a charity blanket. Um, it's kind of going to be not huge. I had four balls of gray, one each of red, yellow, and black, um, and I worked out that I can do twelve down and eleven across. So, and then I'll put an edging on it. I'll probably have to get some more yarn for the edging, but, um, and I just put all, this one, if you've watched this from the beginning, it's featured in the very first podcast that we did and, and has not been touched since then. That's pretty sad. Um, oh wow, that one's way bigger than the others. Ugh, stupid crochet gauge. <laughs> um, it is, the yarn was donated to the West Coast Knitters Guild and it will go to the um, Variety Club and they pass the blankets on to like Ronald McDonald House and Easter Seals House and th places like that. Um, and therefore it has to be machine washable, easy care. Um, and oh yeah, I'm doing the color. So what I did is I figured out how many um, hexagons I could make based on, like I did one and measured it and you know, based on the weight of the yarn. And then I went on to the biscuits and jam um, random stripe generator. And I put in the number of, so I want, knew I wanted gray all the way down each side. So I took out 24 from the total number and then I did the number of stripes. I put in, there's a weighted stripe generator and so I put in my quantities of what I had and then you hit go and it gives you random stripes. And so I went through till I liked a com found a combination I liked, but then instead of doing stripes, each square, each hexagon, it actually technically goes this way, each hexagon is one stripe. So it's a completely randomized thing and I have it on a piece of paper that I wrote out which color goes where. So we'll see how it turns out. It's kind of random and fun and I don't know, it's entertaining. So I'm hoping this is done soon because each hexagon takes me like 10 minutes. So I figure if I can do 11 times 12, I don't know what that means. Or what, it, that's what, 144-ish? Something like that. So it's too early for math, I'm sorry, sorry. 10 minutes times 144? <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully in a week or two. Um, 
And then I have two others to get down to. One I haven't started yet, and a couple others I need. Well, there's a few that I've started that just need to be finished. If I, if I was a nice person, I would tell you you should just do the bodies and then do the edgings for Stash Dash. But I'm not a nice person, so I'm not telling you that. <laughs> That's a really great idea. I should totally do that, because then all I have to do is two rounds of crochet. And look, it's finished, and I get all that... Yeah, okay, I think that's what's going to happen. So in May, end of May, expect to see many finished blankets. <laughs> and the fact that, like, when I first discovered Stash Dash, and they talked about the fact that people start planning for it, like, freakishly far ahead of time, I was like, those people are crazy. I've become those people. Um, well, so I have this blanket of Stash Squares. Well, it's not really a blanket yet. It's a pile of, sta of squares. And... Uh, if I, but you have to knit on it, right? So if yeah. I sew them all together, that doesn't count. But if I knit a couple of squares to add to it, does that count? Yeah. Or like a border, if I, I could crochet a border around it? Yep, yeah, you just have to do some knitting or crocheting there's, on it. There's a lot of squares. So that might have to go into Stash Dash this summer. It is on my, uh, I was just watching Marsha on the Twitch and Stitch podcast. Does she still call it that? I thought she said it was poorly. No, she, she changed it to the Fairy Little Podcast. Okay, so on Fairy Little Podcast, and she was talking about all of her, um, New Year's resolutions, and so my main New Year's resolution is to get all of these blankets finished, get them out of my stash. It's a good plan. Because, yeah, there's just too much. And then I have room for more. <laughs> um, okay, so should I talk about my, my other whips? Yes. Okay, so um, also as part of our Wet Coast Wools sweater it along extravaganza thing, um, we are trying to offer a large variety... Ooh. <coughs> Sorry, a large variety of sweater classes. Mm -hmm. um, and I just started teaching one. Um, that is the Clark Pullover by Jane Richmond. And, ooh, I like the color combination. Thank you. I am a fan. Um, and the yarn is the smooshiest thing on the planet, and I'm sad we don't have it anymore. Oh, it's um, that one. Yep. Um, so, it's currently very exciting. But it's not black. Um... So this is the beginnings of the Clark Pullover by Jane Richmond. It's a scoop neck, stripey pullover. Um, I am, I just recently joined for the front and I just need to knit, um, finish doing the increases for the body um, and then it can stay um, waiting for the sleeves to be separated for our next class. Um, I'm knitting it out of the Imperial Tracy 2 that we used to carry. Um, and it's amazing and so smushy and I love it and if I ever come across it again in my life I will buy more of it. It is still available I just don't know where I don't think it's available in Vancouver right now. Yeah I know I just mean like if I come across it in my travels I'll mm. fix them up um yeah because this is it's amazing we used to carry it but I think like with the exchange and everything it just got too much yeah, right? It was, it was pretty crazy by the time and that I mean the dollar is even worse now than it was then so yep but I will say though if you come across them highly recommend it Super soft and smooshy. Would you like to smush it? It's so, yeah, I have a sweater on oh, this too. I love it. I need to rip mine out because I never wear it, so I need to like repurpose the yarn. Well, um, you can knit one of these. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went down, um, a needle size. I couldn't quite get Jane's gauge with this yarn. Another person has knit the Clark pullover in the Tracy 2, and she says she didn't have any problem getting gauge. I messaged her about it. I, I couldn't get gauge, um, even on the seven millimeter or seven and a US 7, four and a half millimeter that she recommends in the pattern. I couldn't get her gauge. It's 19 and a half stitches, which is a strange gauge, but like the closest I could get, I think I got 20 stitches on the US 7, but I didn't like the fabric. It was just like too, it was too drapey. Um, and I don't want my sweater to be see through. Um, I think I, I originally kind of tried to knit my, the blue Tracy 2 that I have into a sweater that was actually made for the the yarn like design for the yarn yeah and they were having you knit on like a three and a half millimeter well it is it is more of a sport weight and less of a, a dk but mm -hmm. um this is what i had and this one i'm working with and it's going really well on the form um so i went down to a four millimeter and i'm getting 21 stitches um for four inches um and glenda helped me by help me i mean she did the math for me <laughs> um <laughs> on what size i should be knitting so i'm knitting i think i'm knitting the the 36 size and it'll give me a finished size of about 37 inches so it'll give me a bit of positive ease but not like this this much positive ease um because i don't want something that i'm that's i'm swimming in but something that's a little bit cozy is is fine um so that's that guy um and i'm very excited about it sadly it will not be done 
in time for um, for the uh, the pigskin party to end, and also for other things. But it'll be. I'm excited for it to be done, even if the yardage counts for nothing. Um, and then for the other knit along, you all, guys all know what's in my favorite sock bag of all time <laughs> of the Dapper Cats. Um, seriously, my favorite sock bag ever. Um, so, um, I have a tiny mustache of a sock whip <laughs> for our Wet Coast Wool's sock hop. Um, hopefully I've been putting hashtags below. So if you guys are knitting along, look up the hashtags or tag your stuff on Instagram. Um, or just post away in the Ravelry group. Or come in and be like, look at the thing! Also acceptable. Um, so I have a tiny mustache of a, of a whip. I haven't cast on the second one, but I've cast on a pair of, it'll probably be Afterthought Heel socks, because I... Haven't done one of those in a while. Um, in the teacup colorway by Nipix in the Fleechy. Um, I don't know. This was just calling to me, and the other guys here haven't cast it on yet, but I will. Um, it's always just a good idea to have a pair of vanilla socks on the needles in case you need knitting that's mm -hmm. more basic, because the sweaters include stripes that I have to like count and doing increases and decreases, and if I'm going to a movie, I don't want to like screw up my striping pattern or. I had to um, need to get like a that. windshield fixed or a chip it fixed in our windshield the other day, and the forty-five minutes at sitting and waiting at the Speedy Auto Glass made for a very good sock knitting time. Yep, it's just always a good idea to have socks on the needles. Um, that so was a weird sound. That was a weird noise. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> random people walking by the store. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this will be my first, my first official entry for my, my box of socks and for our sock hop, because it is not a whip. It wasn't a whip before the year started. Now it's a whip. Um, and... Maybe it needs to start a parallel one for the, all the, like, uh, the half-finished no. sock pack. No. You didn't finish <laughs> But I stuff. have, like, four pairs that can fit into you that. You should have finished them. It's, I don't get to count mine. You don't get to count yours. If anybody um, knows of any other, like, you know, finish the second sock syndrome... Cows, let me know. I'll just wait till I have a lot of injuries. Maybe the, the grocery girls will do it oh, again. Yeah. Maybe you guys should just finish your socks on time. Maybe. Judgment face. <laughs> but but um, why knit socks when there are roosters to be made? <laughs> I don't know why those are mutually exclusive. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to say um, that because this is called the teacup um, colorway, I intend on entering this into um, the year-long Harry Potter cowl that Inside Number 23 is doing because they use teacups divination to read the future so that's my that's my connection um <laughs> i didn't want to cast on my ravenclaw socks yet and i really want to do harry potter knits and i didn't want to do hermione's everyday socks yet because i can't knit those in the dark because i will definitely always mess those up so that's my final whip sock hop sweater challenge i'm in i hope you're all knitting along enjoying your your um well these for me are selfish cast ons because i have birthdays and Valentine's Day and stuff coming up. Almost as soon as any of these make their way off the needles, I have to cast on gifts again. So I did like actively force myself to cast on a pair of socks for myself <laughs> and not for Brian. Because <laughs> um, I realized like the last, before these guys, the last three pairs of socks I finished were for him and that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's not okay. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Um, I think that's all we have for whips and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to do the store news and acquisitions in a separate section? Maybe? Or do we want to just keep going? We can just keep going. Okay. Cool. Um, At least acquisitions. We can stop after that. Okay. Well, th that's a small amount of things, though. Like, this isn't... Okay. Well, whatever. Um, so I don't have any craft all the things this week, because I've been madly knitting on sweaters. Um, but I'm going to put these close enough, because I assume we were taking a break. So my mother-in-law the other day called me out of the blue and asked if she was doing an order from this place in Minnesota that had, like, Nordic wool. Um, and she's just like, hey, do you want yarn? They have yarn. And I'm like, that's a silly question. <laughs> um, so I went, she gave me time to like do some Googling and um, figure out what I wanted. And I realized that this place, I think it was, oh, I can't remember the name of the place. I will put it below, future me. Um, she, um, the place had um, this yarn, which is called Ra... <laughs> Speaking of fun pronunciations, uh, it's Fenulgarn. Yeah, by let, me, let me grab one and I'll put it up so people can. Um, 
Well, should, should I hold it up? If, yeah. That's uh, what it says. Yeah. So I got, um, I was going through my queue and realized that a sweater that's been in my queue forever uses this exact yarn. So um, I got her to pick me up three skeins of this beautiful dark green color and then three skeins of this color and then just one of these guys because I'm going to knit an angry sheep cardigan. Um, it's a pattern by Penny Guri. Once again, will be below me. Maybe I will be smart enough and put a picture of the one I'm actually copying over my face. Who knows though? So it's a color work sweater that's knit in the round. Um, it, her original version is blue stripes, but someone's done a project that's green stripes. So I'm gonna do the green stripes one, and then this is gonna be the sheep, and then I have some black kicking around. Um, but it's also a steaked sweater. Um, so, steaking kick. Very excited about it. Uh, it's just fingering weight, 100% wool. Um, it says some other stuff in a language I don't read and have yet to Can translate it. Um, I assume it's normal, normal wool stuff because it does have the wool symbol on the top of it. This is 100% Norsk on it. <laughs> so, um, anyway, I'm very excited about it. These labels are also much nicer than the ones that they showed on the Ravelry page. So they must have. They um, may have just updated them. Yep. You can kind of see what it. The two. Got to be two two ply knitting wool. Yeah, like I can piece it like together, but, it I, out, so but I don't care that much. It's got to be like Swedish or, uh, or no, it's, you said it's Norwegian, right? I think so, because um, the store is in Minnesota. Um, Minnesota. With your oh yeah, it's N O dash six three one O. That's got to be like the. It would make sense, country. and also it has um, a it has a lady with a spindle on it. As we just sit here reading labels, <laughs> I'm sure that's really exciting. So um, I'm gonna knit an angry sheep cardigan out of this. At some point, not sure when, um, but I'm excited to steak another sweater. I'm excited to steak one sweater, and I'm excited to steak another sweater. You're gonna make me have to like make me want to have to steak something too. The, my last steaking sweater, steaked sweater, took um, three years to finish because I knit it and then I steaked it, or I was ready to steak for a year and a half, and it sat there. And then I got a new machine, sewing machine, and then I sewed it, and then I. That's why you got to do the steaked it <clears throat> strangely, and yeah, it you have to sat. do the the crochet steak. But, yeah, I'll have to try that. There's a um, couple of kids' sweaters I might try it out on. There you Just go. Samples, and then if I mess them up, it's not so bad. Um, transitioning from the steaking thing, um, and to talk about shop news, because I'm just going to keep going. Um, so we are all, all of our new classes are up on the website, um, and one of them we're doing a color work and steaking workshop by we I mean me, because <laughs> um, I'm excited about steaking. So we're going to use the um, coffee cozy. Steak this coffee cozy um, pattern from Ravelry, um, and we're going to knit a colorwork coffee cozy, and then we're going to cut it in half. And we're going to put button bands on it. It's essentially less scary than steaking a whole sweater. <laughs> so it's also manageable in a weekend or two classes in rather two classes. than like you know six months. Yeah, I might do a colorwork steak sweater in the future. Um, who knows? But it's also like I don't know how many people want to do a colorwork steak sweater. So if you want to give Steaking a go, take a look on the website. I think it's the end of February that I'm offering it. Mm -hmm. um, and then Glinda has all the sweater classes happening. Um, then there's sock classes, and there's a knitting in the round workshop that's coming up fairly quickly. So um, so that's exciting. Um, we have our brown bag sock club coming up. There's a couple of spaces still available. Yeah, it starts on the 21st, so sign up now while you can. Um, I'm thoroughly excited to get mystery sock yarn. Uh, we did get the box of sock yarn, so it's I'm excited to take fun. the sock yarn and put it in bags. It's the funnest part. I'm excited to make the And then the you figure markers. out which ones that you hope you get, and then you start asking the, the sock yarn gods to give you the right one. That's true, but sometimes <laughs> the sock yarn gods want to give you sock yarn that's more appropriate for your boyfriend than for you. Uh, but that's <laughs> it's probably the sock yarn gods being smart. Um, and then, most exciting news mm -hmm. that I was tiptoeing around. Um, before is that um, Jane Richmond is coming for an afternoon at the store. Yay! Yay! <laughs> um, so Jane's going to come it's the 28th? Yes, the 28th. January, Saturday, January 28th. Um, and she's going to be here from um, noon until 5 o'clock. Um, uh -huh. And she's just coming for like a knit afternoon thing and she's going to bring samples of her um, West Coast cardigan? Yes? Yes, her West Coast cardigan and hopefully some of her own designs yes um, but if you are working on any of them or planning on making there is actually a West Coast cardigan knit along going on right now yep. um, you can find information on I would say go to Jane Richmond's blog 
and it's I'm sure it's there and her Instagram feed. Um, and yeah, if you're working on one and you want to bring it in and show it to Jane and talk to her and mm -hmm. get your pattern signed. <laughs> yeah. And if you um, and after Jane's visit, if you're feeling inspired to knit a West Coast cardigan. Yeah. Um, after seeing her samples and everything, this one's running a class. Yay. She's terribly excited about. Um, it starts, um, it's the week after the visit, yes? Or the yeah. week of? Um, week after. Now. Week I after. Think. It's after Jane's visit. Yeah. But, so the whole idea is to like, see the samples and get inspired. And I'm sure Jane would love to help you pick out colors. Mm -hmm. I'll just put words in her mouth. <laughs> um. Um, yeah, and we have, um, by then we should have our white sea fusion yarn because they were out of it at the mill and they have to make more. Like, and because you only need two colors, it's a little yeah. bit more manageable. And and it goes um, pretty quick to knit. So Yep. So yeah, Jane's coming. So I'm sad. Like, that's what I was alluding to before is I'm sad my Clark pullover is not going to be done. But hopefully she can see the most progress. of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're excited to have her. Um, she's just going to be here. So come hang out. Come see Jane. Come touch sweaters. Mm -hmm. Um also come see us, but we're not as exciting. We're here all the time. It's okay. You can just come and see Jade and ignore us. That's totally it's fine. Also, yeah, it's also <laughs> fine. Um, but yeah. Um, so I don't think we've. I think that's is that all. everything? Is there no the other pages I already looked at? Right. Yep. That's all. It's a short podcast again this time. We're, yeah, I don't know. We're very good. Very we need efficient. To knit faster, and then we can. Yeah, I'm you know, knitting pretty fast. It's just. I think it's just. I don't know, maybe we're rambling less. Maybe we just need to drink on the podcast. You guys will really like it when we do that. I don't, I don't know. We get a fair number of thumbs down when we do that. So. I know, but I don't. Besides, everyone, it always makes it, you, somehow the comments always make it sound like we've been drinking before filming the podcast. We generally start at the same time as the podcast. So really, the, this much beer is all we've really consumed before the start of the podcast. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Also, sometimes it's just nice to have a, a looser podcast. I don't know, guys. Um, but anyhow, so that's, I think, all we have for you. So mm -hmm. we'll... Um, We'll see you again in two weeks with hopefully hopefully a longer podcast. Maybe we'll pull Jane aside and film a tiny clip. Yes. Shove it in the podcast. Mm -hmm. um, who knows? This is how I edit, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Goblin mo motions. Okay. We need to go. All right. We will see you guys in two weeks. Happy knitting. Bye.